It's my great honor to be here, the first time to be the first ambassador to this forum. I, I am very African, and I am the very friend, 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 and true friend of African. I love this continent. Sometimes the people see a lot of problems in this continent, but for me, that is an opportunity for us to work together. Uh, so I'm very confident of this continent. Although nowadays, for example, some, because the local rent depreciated uh, uh, so much. So a lot of negative news from China, from the world about this country, because they see something happened in Turkey, and some people concerned about it. So I send a very positive message to China. I'm fully confident of the prospect of South Africa. I have the region there. So I think the message, communication is very important. So I'm trying my best to be friend to the media. So I thank you so much for this opportunity for me to come here to brief the media. What happened in our relationship, China and South Africa, China and Africa relations. And of course, now the world global situation is quite worrisome. I think or I also like to brief you something about my president that came here for a very successful state visit, and His Excellency President Lamaposa of South Africa is about to go to China for a state visit. In such a short time, the two heads of state, it changed the state visit. That is not so often to see in the world. What's the meaning of that? How about the outcome? How about the expectation? And also, we just uh, conclude the BRICS successful summit in Joburg. And what outcome there? And now we are about to have the FOCA summit in Beijing, a co-chair by my president, his excellent president Xi Jinping, and his excellent president Lama Posa of South Africa, together with all African leaders, the leader from the continent. Uh, so I think that is, uh, what is the expectation of that uh, FOCA, what we can do together? And more importantly, that is two state visit, two summit, I'd like to brief you, and I'm also happy, ready to answer any question you are interested in or the, any issues of our common concern, uh, if the time we, are, we have. So first, let me brief you something about the successful visit by my president, his excellent president, Xi Jinping, to South Africa before the, the BRICS summit in Joburg. July 24, my president had a very wonderful and successful <coughs> historical state visit to South Africa, and we appreciate so much. His Excellency President Lamaposa opened a whole day, July 24, to accompany my president for the state visit. And of course, the fact of very uh, formal uh, and, and significant welcome ceremony, the uh, meeting, uh, former meeting, informal meeting, have a little meeting for a whole day that it changes the idea. And we all, they also witness a lot of agreement signed by the Chinese, our two government, or the entrepreneurs, uh, the investors, uh, a lot of that. I like to mention, uh, I, I like to share some of them. I like to say this is the third state visit to South Africa by President Xi Jinping of China. And that means South Africa is the only country in the world that Chinese, the President Xi Jinping had paid three state visit to. This is also the worst, uh, worst mentioning that despite his busy schedule, His Excellency at that moment, he have, he's about to receive, he has received more than 20 heads of state from the world, especially from Africa and the emerging country by President Lama Posa. But His Excellency spared one day to receive my president uh, for a state visit on July 24th. And very soon, His Excellency will conduct his first state visit to China and co-chair the forum on China-African cooperation we call FOCA Beijing Summit. To, together uh, with my president, co-chair uh, the focus summit. So such a frequent, uh, frequent exchanges between our two presidents gives full expression of importance, warmth, 
and high levels of our two country comprehensive strategic partnership. It reflects that our two presidents and two government view our relations from strategic highs and long-term perspective. Because in our views, our relationship between China and South Africa serve the fundamental interests of the, our countries and our two peoples. Based on our common values and common and shared interest, it is not affected by the change in government or my time. Sometimes the country, why my person come here for three times for us as state visit? They can come here to attend the summit and go. Or they can come here just for working visit. But in diplomatic relations, the state visit is the highest level. That means my president, His Excellency Xi Jinping of China, he attached great importance to this relations, to see this relationship to the strategic, strategic high. So this is why our relations have leapfrogged from partnership to strategic partnership to now to comprehensive strategic partnership. I think that is three steps. It's different meaning there. Now it's comprehensively uh, to strengthen our cooperation, unity, and cooperation in all areas. That is the meaning of that. So during the state visit, the president, of course, they have a bilateral meeting, former, informal, and have their state banquet. They also, we are very happy to see that they two together jointly attended the one important photo exhibition of science, technology, and innovation. That photo is exhibition to show, to showcase the achievement in China, the achievement in South Africa, and the achievement in the science, technology, and innovation in our two countries, especially the cooperation in those areas in South Africa and in China. Indeed, we're very so, so attractive that uh, our cooperation is not stay on. Sometimes the people in the African continent, uh, in China African cooperation, the people will think China always dumb the, 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 the small products to this continent just by commercial trade. No. Since the year 2000, we established the FOCA. China since, especially the year since the year 2010, when China get rich, more and more uh, investors from China rush to this continent for their direct investment now in the soil. In the year 2000, because we are poor, so China are poor. When we are poor, we have no money to have the investment in this continent. The, at that moment, it total investment just less than one billion US dollar from China in the continent. But now I'm proud to tell you. More than 10, uh, 100 billion US dollar of direct investment from China already going to re have been in this continent. And of course, South Africa is one of the very important country, most important destination for Chinese investment. Now, according to my statistic, uh, all kinds of the direct investment from China to this country is come to more than 25 billion US dollars. I'm proud to say they created more than 400,000 local jobs to the people here. And I'm so happy that also the two heads of state to address the high level dialogue of the scientists from our both two countries, both China and South Africa, to address them, to guide them how we can strengthen our cooperation in science, technology, and innovation. That is very important. In my view, South African, you are quite advanced. All the, solid, the foundation is quite solid in, the, in terms of the science and technology and research. You are quite advanced, have a very solid foundation there. But in the, in the past few years, China paid very high attention to that. And we, we get the, uh, have the great achievement 
in this area in science, technology, innovation. Now, China, we are proud to say we take a lead in the internet economic, share economic, data economic, ocean economic. Now, Jack Ma is from China. He create a lot of job. He inspire a lot of use uh, to create a job, to create the business. Now they do business online. Pay by phone, e-payment. We are quite advanced. Now the use in China cannot survive without the cell phone. You got everything pay by phone. So now we are ready to share with this continent, especially we, start, we are about to start it from South Africa. So my two, our two heads of state go to address this very important dialogue. The first time in our history, the dialogue between the scientists from our both country. So during a visit, two presidents witnessed also the first car rowing off production line at the new big South Africa factory through the video conference. We have the one automobile manufacturer in Koha. And that agreement was signed, witnessed by our, my, my President Xi Jinping, by our two heads of state, in the year, the end of 2015, December 15. But now, I'm proud to tell you that loading of production line ceremony is very important. We have to showcase our cooperation not only remain in a very low level, but manufacture, the manufacture, and also at the verify efficiency, uh, in a very high efficiency. You see, two years ago, we signed the agreement. But now when my president come here, the car has come to us. So now I'm proud to say that's very important. And during the state visit for my president, I think that is a lot of achievement we have made. The most important, the people like to see, is the visa agreement. Sometimes we, we, the Chinese people and South African people are, have a lot of complaint. It's not easy. We are a good friend, but it's not easy to get the visa. We fight very hard for that. And we appreciate your official, the ANC government, and especially the, the Department of Home Affairs and the DECO. They understand how can we work together to make our relations to more productive and beneficial to the people. For my mission, that is very simple. My mission is very simple. To come here to work together with your government and people to make our comprehensive strategic partnership more productive and beneficial to the people, our two peoples. Our relationship is good, but cannot stay on the, in the newspaper or the media or on, between the head of state. We need to come to the people. So I think the visa agreement is very important. We already signed, and now my embassy together with the Home Affairs Department of your country, we're very hard to implement it. We are about, we are ready to work together in a very short period of time. The Chinese people come to South Africa and the African, South African people to China will get one visa for five years, very for five years, multiple entries, each time for 90 days. I think it's good to encourage the people to, to, to exchange their travel. To go to China, China is not perfect, but it's a promised country. I'm proud of my country. You go there to see something is new there. If you know China 10 years ago, that idea is too old. That's too old story for us. We keep changing every day. And we are opening. We are very humble to learn from the world. Of course, we like to open to this continent, especially to South Africa, to go there to have a look what the Chinese are doing, how they can get such a rapid development in such a short time, what they are doing there. So we are ready to share with you all. The visa is the key. Of course, South Africa is the best destination for tourism, not only for China, but for the whole world. I, I, I'm very confident and also very agree with His Excellency President Lama Posa. Job is the key to solve all the problems we are facing. Poverty is the common enemy 
in this country, in this continent, in the world. But job is the key. But job, I agree with His Excellency, Brother Lama Posa. Job only come from two fields. One is from the investors for production. The second is job only come from tourists, a visitor as tourism. I think this is are the two sector and the visa is the key, the precondition to encourage people to come here to enjoy how the, the people here, how the culture here, how they love the environment here, but to pay, create a job to our people. Jo tourism is a very, very quick win area to get a job. That's the one thing. Now we are we're trying we're our best to work together with your government to make the agreement implement. I'm sure, not too far. The second is, when my president came here, our two heads of state, we need a lot of agreement signed in the pres presidency. The total, I'm very happy, of course, the, a lot of agreement by the two government, but more important than that is a commercial agreement. Now we say about more than 10 commercial agreements. And the total amount of the agreement will come to 14.7 billion US dollars. 14.7 billion US dollars at this moment. The commitment of investment and financial support to this country is very important. Based on our mutual political and strategic trust, if you don't trust each other, the money will never come to you. And this is the people. If those money come to South Africa and create a job benefit for the people here, of course, this relationship will be beneficial to the people. So I'm proud to say, at that moment, to see such a big amount at this crucial moment is very important. Because I'm very happy that the scholar, the thin tanker, the government, especially the market, give us a very positive response. In two days, the local currency rent appreciated by 2.7 percent. Because why? In the process, uh, in, a, in a pursuit of the social and economic uh, transformation led by His Excellency President Ramaphosa, he get the strong commitment from China, get the strong support from China. We work together with this government, these people under the leadership of His Excellency President Lama Posa. Because he's, uh, he's had the new investment drive, as you know. Now he's about to host the investment summit. But who will come to South Africa? That's a challenge. How much they will come bring the money together? It's a big challenge. But China at this moment, we take the lead to take concrete action to encourage the financial institution to give you the financial support. We encourage the Chinese potential investor to come here for the investment. Based on our trust in your new president, your government, and the people. So I think that is an important outcome I'd like to mention. So it's very fair to say that China-South Africa relations has become a role model for China-Africa South South Corporation and Emerging Market Corporation moving forward together. China and South Africa will have much to contribute to the building of a closer China Africa community of shared future and contribute to a new type of international relations featuring mutual respect, fairness, and justice. Justice means the rule of law. Our cooperation, our friendship also have to follow the rule of law. Featuring the mutual respect, fairness, and justice, and win-win cooperation. And that is some of the, the, some, uh, the, 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 the state visit to my, my president to come to this country. I'm, I'm also happy to see His Excellency is about to have the very perfect delegation to go to China soon. Of course, that deco and your government will tell you more. I also about to leave next Monday to get ready in Beijing to work together with your 
diplomat, your government, to make the state visit by His Excellency President Lama Posa for another. This is his first state visit. And I'm sure will be another very important and significant and historical state visit he paid to China. The most important also, we also like to not only to have the dialogue with my president, at the meeting with my president, and co-host the focus summit in Beijing, but also I'm sure he open himself, promote South Africa to the Chinese people to know who you are, what you have, what you need, how you can go together. I'm sure this significant state visit is also very important. And we like to work together with the government to pay this state visit another fruitful, visible and tangible result. This is why we work together with DECO, your government, very hard. We try our best to make our trip, our, our stay busy by our two head of state more fruitful and practical. We have the very high expectation of that. We will and see. Ah, you will see. The second thing I'd like to bring you is the BRICS Job Summit. Uh, the BRICS Job Summit, of course, uh, course, last month, South Africa successfully hosted the 10th BRICS Summit in Job. The Chinese President Xi Jinping has attended the summit, and this is the second time for South Africa to host the BRICS summit. This is also an important summit of the BRICS, because for the BRICS, uh, because I say the BRICS has marked the opening of the second golden take decade of the BRICS cooperation, because this is a very important summit for the BRICS as it must the opening of the second golden decade of the BRICS cooperation. Ah, the, the, as you know, the BRICS were established uh, when we suffer from the financial crisis. That is, the BRICS come up. The summit adopted the BRICS Jobber Declaration. Ah, so we already publicized, you know there. The BRICS Jobber Summit has been highly successful with four major achievements in my view. They have a lot of achievement, but in my views, they have four major achievements. First, the summit has drawn a new blueprint for a future BRICS cooperation. During the summit, after analyzing the new development in science and te technological innovation, in that level, uh, the theme of the summit is very important. The theme, they say, the BRICS uh, uh, are together with Africa to welcome the fourth industrial revolution. So the, I think the, the, the industrial revolution and also digitalization. The BRICS country have unanimously agreed to seize the new opportunity for innovative and inclusive growth in the fourth industrial revolution. In this regard, one of the most important outcomes of the BRICS Job Summit is the adoption of the initiative of BRICS partnership on the new industrial revolution initiated by South Africa and China. The purpose of which is to deepen corporate. The BRICS, uh, BRICS Summit, they have a lot of meeting there. But I think they need the partnership uh, more, the new platform for the people to sit together. How can we go together for higher levels, for to improve, to labor, uh, to 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 escalate in our cooperation levels. The the purpose of the partnership is to deepen cooperation in digitalization, industrialization, innovation, inclusive growth and investment. So as to speed up the transformation from old economic driving forces to new ones, as well as economic transformation and upgrading. The world has gone so far. Now, the digital, digitalization is already among us, no far from us. So I think that is a very important, significant summit here. 
I'm very happy to share with you that the BRIC country has already agreed to establish an advisory group next month to work for the plan on implementation of this important initiative. You see, when China participates in any platform, in any multilateral mechanism, we like to see not only come to talk, but also to implement, to action oriented. So after the agreement, we were together with Steco uh, of your foreign ministry that we need to set up the advisory group from thinker, from government official, experts, media, together. To, to work together where we can go together. I think that's a very important outcome we are achieving. The second is the new progress have been made in strengthening the economic and trade mechanism. How to benefit our two people? I think two driving forces is very important. One is the investment, economic, and trade. And that is very important. So the BRICS have agreed to reconvene the trade promotion working group of the contact group on economic and trade issue and have established new mechanism on law and technical standards, small and medium enterprises, and the outcome implementation. This new progress, a new mechanism, will make BRICS cooperation more dynamic, more institutionalized, and more concrete. The second thing they have taken uh, is the BRICS have adopted the implementation framework for intellectual pro property rights cooperation mechanism. The implementation of framework, the framework for intellectual property rights cooperation mechanism, which will further strengthen cooperation in capacity building, information exchange, and network development. And the third achievement they have made is the endorsement of the framework for BRICS e-commerce e e cooperation. We will enable capacity building and best practice sharing in narrow the digital gap. The first one they do is the BRICS Trade in Service Cooperation Roadmap and establishment of the BRICS focal point on trade in service will facilitate progress in exchange of information on international trade in service between BRICS member states. The first they do is, in addition, uh, the, the BRICS partners have also agreed to commission the review of the BRICS Joint Trade Study on increased value-added trade to further reduce the trade potential of the BRICS countries to enable BRICS countries to effectively move up in global value change. We are confident of that. All of these achievements will further reinforce the unity and cohesive, cohesive venice of the BRICS countries and will inject new vigor into BRICS economic and trade cooperation in a new era. You can imagine the BRICS cooperation will not come here only to talk have the meeting, the dialogue, but they have improved. Not only have the, the new mechanism, but improve their cooperation mechanism again and again so that to improve the efficiency in our cooperation and more, make it more fruitful. The third achievement the summit has made, in my view, is to send a very strong voice of fairness and justice to the world economy. Against the backdrop of the rising protectionism in relativism, in extreme individualism. The British country has come together strongly to fight for a fair, the fair and just international order, to uphold a rule-based multilateral free trading regime. The British country has reformed their strong commitment to inclusiveness and win-win international cooperation, strong commitment to multilateralism and global, global governance, strong commitment to the full compliant with the joint main international rules. We went together for the rule, but not to be the rule breaker. The brief spirit of openness, inclusiveness, and winning cooperation has resonated strongly 
the common voice of the vast number of developing countries. Charting for the world the correct course for economic globalization and mute multipolarization. I think that's very important at this moment, cru crucial moment for the developing country, especially the emerging market, to stand together to say no <coughs> to the extreme individualism. The fourth, the summit has improved the BRIC plus cooperation mechanism. The BRICS is us for five countries, but now they, last year in Xiamen, the summit, we adopted a new model of cooperation that means the BRICS is open to the all new partners, so we call the BRIC Plus model, and expanding the developing partnership network. This is very important. I'm very happy to see that this time the Joba Summit, uh, the South African uh, improve, not only practice the BRICS Plus model, but also improve that model, not only open to the emerging power, new partner, but open for the whole continent. At that moment, about 20 African countries, head of state or head of government, come here to appreciate, to participate, to contribute to the BRICS, to encourage such a model, BRIC plus, uh, to plus emerging market in the world, or the vast number of country of the developing country in the world. That is very important. I'm very happy to see that. So over the past months, some people have argued that South Africa did not benefit from the BRICS. I also like to tell you how about my idea. Some people argue about that. I'm proud of South Africa because you already hosted two BRICS uh, summit. When you host the summit, South Africa, Georgia, become the focus of the international media, international community. Everybody open their eye and wait to see, see what happened, what will be happening there. So I think it's very important, in my views, the decision made by South African government to join the BRICS serve the fundamental interests of the country, the nation, and the people of South Africa for four reasons I like to mention. First, BRICS has significantly made South Africa stand high in the world. South Africa is the only member state of the BRICS from Africa. BRICS, as emerging economies, has become more and more important force in building a more fair justice, just and inclusive international governance system, giving South Africa a proud identity on the global stage. Second, BRICS has brought tangible benefit to South Africa. As a main engine driving economic growth rate, the BRICS, uh, the combined population of the BRICS country accounts for 40% of the total world population. The, the BRICS aggregate economy accounts for 23 of the global total and keeps increasing and has contributed to over, the BRICS uh, aggregate economy has contributed to over 50% of the world economic growth, more than all the developed of all the developed country combined. So I think from 2011 to 2016, South Africa's trade with other British partners has increased by 54.7%. From, from 2011 to 2016, South Africa's trade with other British partners has increased by 54.7%. The more trade to the other country, es more export, more production made in your country, more job created in your country. I'd love to see that happen more. The BRICS New Development Bank had its first regional bank center, which is located in Joburg. Now Russia, Brazil, India like to have the regional 
uh, center. But the first regional center, your government fighting so hard to bring them here. So going forward, the BRIC country will contribute to implement, complement each other. Uh, we have an emerging country, emerging market. We have huge, like China and India, huge population there. And here, whatever you grow and produce in your country, the market are more than enough. Whatever you produce, don't worry. The market in China and India is big enough to, 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 to welcome all the products you grow or produce in your country. It is very sure that South Africa will benefit from them even more. Sir, the BRICS give South Africa a high profile stage to attract the global attention, just now as I mentioned. The BRICS is no longer a grouping of five countries alone. Thanks to the BRICS Plus, BRICS has now become a champion for all developing and emerging countries. When BRICS gather, the whole world have no choice but to watch what happened will be there. While hosting the BRICS Job Summit, South Africa has attracted the focus from all over the world, it attracted the eyes and, and media from all over the world. So at that time, South Africa has received more than 20 heads of state and government from the world and many more representatives from international community. BRICS Business Council draw business leaders from all over the world to, less, um, uh, to, to South Africa. For every five years, South Africa has one chance to host a new summit, a BRICS summit. For South Africa, this is a great opportunity to showcase its achievement of development and your society and your culture and your people and to attract global attention and more importantly, to attract global investment. And that is some of my, uh, my idea. I think it's very important. Therefore, the job of summit I'd like to bring you. And for the focus summit, uh, focus Beijing summit, and the offering of Africa. And have been, I, I have been to 38 countries in the continent. I was the ambassador to Liberia. I was the ambassador to Malawi. I'm, I'm happy at Malawi. I'm the ambassador to South Africa. And I also served in Zambia uh, for three years as a counselor. And I was a DZ for China African relations in our foreign ministry. Had the chance to travel, uh, have been to 38 countries in the country. I almost say I'm very African. That means I try my best to know who you are, what you have, what you need, how can we work together. And I'd like to share some of you, some of my ideas. I'm very happy to share some of, some of you. Focat was jointly established by China and African countries, not all the countries, only the friendly country in the continent. What's the meaning of friendly? That means when they have the diplomatic relations with China, recognize one China policy to have the diplomatic relation with us. Now there's only one country in the continent, that is Switzerland. We open for them to come to join us, the big family, the friendly family. If they did not come to join us, they will never benefit from our package, our commitment to this continent. So now the, the Sweden people, they come to me and say, hi guy, you built a lot of railway, railway, uh, highway, airport, seaport, a lot of infrastructure in the continent. Why not reach Sweden? Where is more country, please? I said, no. You did not have that precondition. You did wrong. You take the wrong decision against the principle of one China policy because that policy is adopted, agreed by one resolution adopted by the UN Security Council. All the member states of the UN must follow and also comply with that resolution. That is one China policy. That is, that means there's only one country in the world. The People's Republic of China is the only, is the sole legal government representing 
whole China, including mainland and Taiwan. But if they did not recognize one China policy, how can they benefit? So this is why we say the focus was established by China and the friendly Afghan country in the year 2000. When we get into, we join hand together to get into the new century. So over the past 18 years, focus has grown tremendous in terms of the mechanism building, practical cooperation, and achievement. I'm very proud to say nowadays, the FOCA has undoubtedly become the most leading, visible, influential, and high achieving cooperation forum for, developing for development cooperation with Africa. You have a lot of the mechanism cooperation with different regions. Afghan one what? But I proudly, loudly to say, the focus between China and Africa has become the flagship cooperation model for the international cooperation with this continent. In my views, the success of FOCA is attributed to the three factors. Why I can say like that? I challenge them, follow me. First, FOCA has established comprehensive mechanism. Not only the forum to talk, but we have a lot of mechanism to implement all the consensus agreement reached and made by the head of state every time. Uh, so the mechanism, the forum has an improved mechanism for cooperation, including the ministerial conference, senior official meetings every year we have. Every three years, we have ministerial meeting, conference. Every one year, we have senior official meeting for what? For monitor. How about review the implementation of the outcome? The follow-up follow -up committee on outcome implementation. I challenge them. You have a lot of forum, but there's only one forum called FOCA. Have the follow-up committee. I was the secretary general for that. My mission is very simple. After the summit, my job is very simple. To summarize the agreement we have signed, the action plan we have made, and distribute all the mission to different department ministry in China. And my job then, after three months, I will ask them how, what is going on? How, what is the progress there? They have to report to me, and then I will summarize and report to my premier and president's office. This is the progress of the implementation of the outcome. And whoever reluctant to do it, I will get their words, completely original from them, and send it back to my president and premier's office. So no one can deny. They, when my president and premier promise, we have no choice, no argument, but to implement. That is the function of follow-up committee. So I challenge them. Whoever you have so many fo fallen, let them have the follow-up committee. Let them honor the words, not empathy thought. We also have the secretariat. And this is what I say I have. But I'm more happy today. I'm, I'm very happy to say now, more than 40 countries in the continent follow China to have the same follow-up committee. Some of them chaired by the president and prime minister. Some of them chaired by the minister. I'm very happy to see that because China, we come here to see the partnership instead of ownership. Whatever I, I can, what I like to do in this continent, in this country, I have no choice but to work together with your government. Because we come here to see the partnership instead of ownership. I cannot do by my own. So sometimes you complain, why we did not get that implementation in my country? I say, I'm sorry, I cannot do by my own. When you're ready, I'm ready. When you're ready, and in condition, you will benefit most, first and more. But if I'm not ready, don't worry, we'll respect you. Because if I'm not ready, who can help you? God only help those people who help themselves. We are not God. We are the partner. We are partner, that means we are ready, we are ready to work together very seriously. So I'm very happy now, more than 40 countries 
the government have the full committee of FOCA to work together with Chinese uh, counterpart. This institution arrangement not only ensures the smooth operation of the FOCA, but also guarantees that foreign will not be a talk shop. We're not a talk shop every three years, people pay for talk, but a place for action and implementation. Let it fork out. Why? They are very welcome by the people from our both sides. Second, FOCA deliver tangible and visible result. China has never made empathy promise. This sometimes is difficult for us to work together with the African people uh, for the action plan. Sometimes our culture is different. When we agree together with you to write down the item in the action plan, we have no choice but to implement. So before we write down, I have to go to that department and ministry to ask them, according to my president's commitment and government's policy, can you move ahead in this area, go so how far? And then promise, they say, oh, this is, you can do it, this is what can do it. I say, okay, I tell them no and write down. And when we made in the action plan and in a speech by my president or premier, they have no choice. To go back home, this is your commitment, this is your job, and implement. So this is where we are very cautious to make the promise. But whenever our leaders make that promise on behalf of the government and people, we have no choice but to implement. We always believe that. For the forum to sustain and succeed, it must deliver and meet the urgent demand of the African people for durable peace and sustainable development, in my view. This continent, we like to work together for this continent just for very simple two things only. For we, we need to fight together, work together for durable peace and serve sustainable development. At this moment, I'm so sorry to say, in my view, believe. If we are not independent economically, it's hard for us to be independent politically because you cannot survive yourself. So I appreciate the AU now, the fighting so hard for the independent economically and politically. I'm happy to see that. You will get our full support. This is why China made our political commitment to work together Starting from politics affair is your home affair. It's your domestic affair. One of my business. If that is your home affair. As a partner, as a true friend, what we can do is work together with you to, to develop your human and natural resources to benefit your people, to see, to achieve the serve sustainable development for the durable peace. Ah, for the durable peace. So the second, the third, to help Africa, we have identified all the visible and tangible results, I'm proud to say. In my view, there's only one common enemy in this con continent, that is poverty. Poverty is the common enemy in the continent, in your country, in my country, in the world. If we are a poor country, China, we are not rich enough. We still have 30 million people living under poverty. We're fighting for that. By the end of 2020, China, with over 1.4 billion population, will be free of poverty. I challenge anyone in the world. Let us work together. For over 1.4 billion population, free of poverty. We will be. We are now we're fighting, my president, fighting in the front. We will achieve. Because in the past, 40 years, more than 700 million people, Chinese people, out of poverty. My dear, when we get into the new century, your country is more advanced than China. In the year 2000, China it was very poor. They're still very poor. We fight so hard. Even come to the new century, we are still in a very poor condition. But now when you go to China, you will see something different. That is everything, in my view, in our views, everything could be possible if we united and committed. If we fight among ourselves, of course, 
we spend a lot of time to fight. No, no people go to work. And committed to economic development. We need to work for economic development. But this continent, how can we call ourselves poor country? We have poor capacity to develop ourselves. Why? We are poor in capacity building in two ways. One is infrastructure. The highway, the road, the seaport, the airport, the communication, the electricity, the water. If you do not have such a kind of infrastructure system, nothing could be happen. No investor will come here. Because why? The infrastructure is not ready. The cost of the production will be very high. So infrastructure is the number one capacity building. The second is human resources development. Because we lack of the professional skill and personnel. Professional and skill and personnel. That is very important. The human resource development, the key. The third bottleneck is money, financial input. So for any country in the world, whoever wants to get their self sustainable development, three are the must and necessary. Infrastructure development, human resource development, and financial input. So to, now I'm proud to say in this continent, we are free, we are proud to say. We work together. When my president came here two, years, uh, two more years ago, as you remember, in a job focus job, job summit, my president worked together with African leaders to open a new era of win-win cooperation for common development. The new era of China and Africa. What's the meaning? Why we move to the new era? Because we, enjoy, we cherish the long-term friendship. We are very happy to say we are a good friend, we are a good partner, good brothers for long. That's a friendship. But if China go too far and this country left behind, why we can say we are one in one family as a brother and sister? So my president come here and say, no, we need to work together to get into the new era of win-win cooperation for common development. My president, he attached great importance. I'm proud to say, President Xi Jinping, when he was elected as a president in the 2013, the first overseas visit, official visit by him, is to this continent. South Africa is part of that, in the year 2013. And then, this year, he was re-elected as a president of China. The first overseas visit also come to this continent. South Africa is part of that. In the year 2015, my president came here for another state visit. So this, is, this country is the only country my president Xi Jinping paid his, tribute, uh, his state visit three times in the world. So my president, he attached great importance to see to, to, to lead our relationship between China and Africa. He see this continent as a strategic high. Because why? China, we, sometimes the people do not understand. Why China say, my president, my government always keep saying, China always belong to the developing country. That does not only mean we have some poor in some areas, but the most important, that's our political commitment, political decision. We are belong to the developing country. We have to work together with the developing country. When the developing country remain in poor, we must be there together. So my president gave us the new idea in conducting the cooperation between China and, South, and, and Africa. We have to follow the common values of friendship, justice, and shared interest. Friendship, of course, we know we are good friends. Justice, that means based on the rule of law. We will share interest, not common interest, because we have a lot of common interest, but some people share more or some less. But this time my president say, we use the word share interest, because why? When we have the cooperation, we must be sure benefit two sides, share by two sides. Otherwise, when only share Chinese, the, the host will find them out. When only share the host, then people will not come. So my president say, let us put 
this is the, as a, uh, we have to follow the common value. And I'm very happy the, co the essence of this, the meaning, the core meaning of this, his idea is to put China's development, combine China's development, and help African development, sustainable development together to see the win-win cooperation for common development. He's not only come here to talk, but last the year 2015, he, he come to the focus summit, job summit, he announced on behalf of my government, 10 major cooperation plans between China and Africa in the next three years. The 10 major cooperation plan, the main purpose for that plan, I think the main purpose for that uh, plan, two things very important. First, to help this continent to facilitate the main purpose for that major plan is to facilitate the actor for the, the, the industrialization and agricultural modernization. Because in our views, it's only the industrialization can sustain the economy. It's only the agricultural modernization can ensure the food security. So this is are the two of the major main purpose of the 10 major cooperation plan between China and Africa. And how to solve, how to achieve? My plan says say, he made a commitment with 60 billion US dollars, either by grant, either by law, or in, by, by law, concessional law and commercial law. Put together, it's there, money. Or not only the plan, but plus money. Some people like to talk and make a lot of empathy promise with some money, nothing could be done, no money. So for what? To, to solve three bottleneck problem in this continent. First, the bad work infrastructure, the lack of prof prof professional skill, personnel, the lack of capital financial input. That is three bottleneck. To help this continent to solve three bottleneck. So now about two more, month, two more years has gone. I'm proud to say. A lot of major projects in the continent has been completed, put in into operation or under construction. We go to Addis. Addis now they have the train to go to Djibouti. As before, they, they need three to five days to transport the cargo from Addis to Djibouti by car. And if they have cars extended there, perhaps there were more. But now it's about 15 hours or seven hours, I forgot the number, just seven hours. Overnight, the cargo from Addis will go to the world, go to the sea. So I'm proud to say Ethiopia is a landlocked country, but because of that railway put into full operation, now they have the sea. So now attract a lot of investors from American, from China, from India, from Bangladesh to relocate the manufacturer in Ethiopia just because of the infrastructure we help the country to develop. Not only build the railway, we also help them to build a lot of industry parts. One of the industry parts we call Habasa. We work together with the Ethiopian government, complete the industry part by nine months. That's a much in the world. Now the part is full of investment, full of production, a lot of job created. Now Ethiopia, I'm proud to say, has become the largest textile exporter in the continent to America, just because the railway. Now go to Kenya. Uh, Kenya now, we help them to build. Now the railway from Bombasa to Nairobi has put into completed and put into full operation. Now a lot of people never go to Bombasa. I was there. It's a lovely old city, coastal city. It was opened by Oman, the God people, the Arab people. Is, that city is more than 200 years old. But the people in Nairobi never went there because it's far. But because the railway, five hours, cheap there, cheap, easier. So now the, the, it's not easy to get a ticket for that railway. 120 to 150 kilometers per hour is nice. Now I'm proud to tell you the railway from Nairobi is extended to the border and we go to Rwanda and Uganda now is under construction. Now you go to Nigeria. 
I'm proud to say. In the recent year now, I'm happy to see the media from the Nigeria. Nigeria has become the most beneficial of China African relations. One of the most beneficial country in the continent to benefit for our China African cooperation. Because more than 27 million billion US dollars has gone to Nigeria. Another 22 billion US dollars have been signed to be go to Nigeria. Another 40 billion US dollars under negotiation, including the coastal line, coastal railway with the length of more than 1,000 kilometers. The feasibility study is conducted and the commitment from China is ready. So you can put together this 90 billion has gone and to be gone. Most of them are going to the railway infrastructure development. Now, I'm proud to say they are ambassador to South Africa. One day he met me and I, I know nothing about him. And he's, uh, we, we sit together and say, hi, I'm the ambassador from Nigeria. I appreciate so much. He gave me the cell phone, the picture of the railway, the highway we built in that country. He said, I'm Esther. this is what you are doing in my country. I'm, proud, I'm so touched because why? I'm proud that my government people will do the right thing to the people. The people, the ambassador know nothing about me. I never met him. He said, I'm the ambassador from Nigeria. I appreciate this is the job you have done in my country. I'd love to see that. That country already have one railway from China, China low and built by China, put into full operation. Another two is under construction. The, the coastal line, we already have their consensus to build. So I'm proud to say a lot of industry part in the continent. I can mention a lot, but South Africa also, we also benefit a lot. Now the Heisen TV and TV and the, the, the refrigerator manufacturer factory is already put into full operation. The automobile manufacturer is already in Kuha, two automobile manufacturer in Kuha. Now the, the fabric uh, cable uh, manufacturer in Dubai, industry park. A lot of more and more investors to come here because of the full cup. So I'm happy to see now, wherever you go in the continent, perhaps the road you travel by is built, financed by China. Uh, the airport you landed is built and financed by China. The AU building, for the AU Commission is granted and built by China. So I'm happy to see sometimes the people worry about the Chinese money. A lot of money come to this continent. First, they like to say they create a debt crisis. Most people, they know nothing about me, about China. You know nothing about the practice in the soil. You go to Addis, of course, we give them a lot of financial support in terms of the commercial law a concessional law and a grant. But everything come from China, go straight to the project, go straight to the project. The government, the minister, never get a cent from the Chinese side. Because why? The bounty will only go for the project. The project, only the project with feasibility study. The project, only the concept you will never get a bunny from China, any cent from China. The project, whatever we have to get the bunny from China, either by law or commercial law, concessional law, you have to give me the project according to your national development plan, plus feasibility study to ensure the Chinese government and ban. This project is profitable and sustainable. If this project is not sustainable and profitable, you will create the debt. When we create the debt to the host, we create a bit trouble to myself. The Chinese bank will be bankrupt. All of them will close. So we never done that. So that people worry about that. I worry much than them. So they say, the Chinese investment come here, the money come here, no transparent. I challenge them. I never know American, the European Union, what they are doing in this continent because they never go to the public, to the media. They did not tell, tell me where the bunny going. They got, they got a lot of bunny from the parliament. I don't know where's the project in this continent, in the name of this continent, the finance to this continent. Where's the bunny going? 
tell me in the media. But the Chinese body come to this continent, we follow the transparent democratic procedure, no exception, of our two countries. In China, we have the long procedure to get the money. It's not easy. First, pre-commutual trust. Pre-commutual trust, no trust, no precondition, no money. Second, economically. The money cannot come here to create debt. Otherwise, we create a trouble to ourselves. So you have to give me the feasibility study to ensure. The second is, is your government give us that project? And the project, the money will go straight to the project, not to a bank, not to a treasury department, not to a government, no individual. Go straight to the project. So I think that is, what's the meaning of transparent, of course, in our country, in your country, in the host, and China, we have the transparent process. Never worry about that. So, that is, I'm happy to say that this uh, commitment for my president comes this year, at this moment, we see a lot of visible and tangible result. I'm happy to say, see that. And in terms of the human resources development, my president promised in three years, we will offer not less than 30,000 government scholarships. Now, more than 20,000 government scholarships has gone. Another 10,000, of course, is no problem at all. We will mean that not only the government uh, scholarship from central government, but also we encourage the local government and the investor in your country have to offer their scholarship to the South African people to go to China or the African people to go to China. So I'm very proud to say every three years, my president promised to train not less than 200,000 African personnel. Now I'm pr proud to say that we already fulfilled that commitment. So the th that is the visible, the commitment from China in the focal mechanism I think is visible and tangible. The third, I think the, the figure is the focus follow the principle and common values of equality and mutual respect. Efficiency and pragmatic approach and win-win cooperation for common development. All the focus members regarded as of their size, wealth, and population participating in the focus are equals. We respect each other. No one is forced to do anything they don't like to do. Everything is based on consensus. Nothing is achieved through bullying. Uh, nothing is achieved through bullying. So every three years, the focus makes a new action plan based on the condition and achievement need of the member state of this continent. The implementation of the action plan is carefully monitored and reviewed to ensure efficient and effective results. So under this focus, the win-win cooperation for common development has become our common aspiration, common values, and common objective. And I think now that is some of the, the job summary I'd like to brief you. The outcome is very positive. Now, how about the next? The, the FOCA Beijing Summit on the four, 3 to 4 September in Beijing. This is another new this is the third focus summit in our history. And the first in, we have in Beijing is two, 2006. The second one is in Joburg in 2015. Now this is the third focus summit will be held in Beijing. I'm very happy that how can we see some expectation for this new summit? Because now the outcome is, the outcome, two outcome document will be adopted during the Beijing Summit. One is Beijing Declaration. The folk of Beijing Declaration towards an even stronger community of shared future between China and Africa. And that is the theme we are working for. And the action plan for 2019 to 20, uh, 2021, and then next three years, I think will be adopted. That is the two uh, uh, outcome document we adopted. And now I'm thinking about how about, of course now, because at this crucial moment, at this crucial moment, uh, the summit attract 
very high attention from the international community. Because globally, we have witnessed a sharp rise of protectionism and unilateralism and extreme individualism. The international governance system and the rule-based multilateral free trade regime is facing the gravest challenge and damage since the World War II. So under such a kind of circumstances, it is natural, it's quite natural, that the Fukuoka Beijing Summit has attracted the international attention or the attention of the leader in Afghan and beyond. Now, 53 country, 53 African country in the continent, plus the AU Commission, uh, has confirmed the attendance by the head of state, head of government, or their representative. The UN Secretary General and the AU Chairperson will also be there. And some of the international, uh, uh, international the, the, represent, the representative uh, from the international community will be there to join us there. The Beijing, the focal Beijing Summit will focus the theme. The theme is China, Africa, towards an even stronger community with a shared future through win-win cooperation. I think we always keep the win-win cooperation for common development. Uh, that is our common values, common objective. So I think the theme is not bad. I think that is some of the ideas. And uh, of course, that would like to synthesize our strategy, development strategy and to make a good a new action plan for our next three years. I think some focus, there are some major topic that we will discuss, we can summarize. Uh, the focus cooperation will continue this focus. I'm sure they will focus several things. First, we continue to focus to continue to address three bottlenecks in the continent. Three bottlenecks is any country, whoever wants to sustain the economy, you have no choice but to deal with them carefully. First, infrastructure development. The second is human resource development. The third is financial input. So that is three bottlenecks must be the top issue we are about to discuss. Another three priority area cooperation we are about to strengthen. The three priority area cooperation. And deepen cooperation in four priority objective, in my views. And to promote the development of five network in the continent, I, love, I hope to see. Three bottleneck issues just now, as I mentioned, is there infrastructure, professional skill, personnel, and capital resources. The three important priority area I'd like to mention is investment, market access, and tourism. His excellent president of Uganda, President Museveni, he's so smart. He said some country in the world did not, did not understand this continent, what we need in the continent. The most important to drive the industry, to sustain the industry development in this continent is three things, driving forces, three driving forces. One is investment. Whoever can get the money, technology transfer, know-how to invest in your country. <coughs> that is the way to sustain your economy and create a job. The second, when you have the production here, you need market access. This is why we stand out to say no. Uh, to some extreme individualism against the free trade regime. This is why, because we need the market access to let it trade. And the third is the tourism. Let the people to come here to enjoy, to know each other, but to pay. If the people not, do not come here to, to, to see each other, how can you expect them to get the money from the pocket? So tourism is very key. Four priority area of cooperation, I'd like to say. Industrialization, agricultural modernization are the two key areas in this continent to sustain your economy. Now, I like to see we have to pay more attention to that is digitalization for internet economy, data economy, share economy, lab economy, digitalization. We must pay the very high attention because the full industrial revolution is come to us, has come to us. And the urbanization, and the urbanization, we have to pay attention to, because most of the poor people are living in a rural area. 
The Amman area is quite good, but the, urban, the rural area still remain poor in the continent. So we need to put the urbanization as another one of our pilot area for us to cooperate between China. And the five network to achieve such an objective, five networks are very necessary in the continent. One is the railway network. Now we have the railway, the country do not have the railway. If we have the network, the people facilitate the single market. How can we achieve the single market? Only by the five network. One is railway. Second is highway. The third is aviation, the air. Four is information, the cable. The communication network is very important. And also electricity network. Sometimes this country have coal, that country have the energy, the gas, that country have oil, but the other country do not have half such a resource of energy. We need to build a network. This fine network of infrastructure are the key to help this continent to achieve the single market and economic, sustainable economic development. So that is some area I'm very sure that this continent, we have the, every region to believe that as a leader from China and Africa gather in Beijing, we are for another historical and successful focus summit. China and African cooperation will embrace a new era of win-win cooperation for common development. And we will gather strength and momentum towards an even closer China-African community of shared future. This is what I like to build. I like to a few words uh, to, to a few minutes to, to, to answer your question if you have. Okay.